Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about um, ADHD. Uh, we're going to, I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about our work in the ADHD clinic in uh, Schneider Medical Center for Children and about my uh, um, PhD that researched this field. Don't worry, only a little research. Okay, so what is ADHD? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, this is the, D the DSM. ICD-10, most of you are from Europe, so ICD-10 talk about hyperkinetic with conduct disorder. There is hyperkinetic, but the child that come to our clinic have hyperkinetic with conduct disorder. Okay, so a little fact about ADHD. ADHD is a chronic Neurobehavioral disorder affecting attention and concentration and accompanied by hyperactive and impulsive, impulsivity. Until the DSM-5, before the DSM-5, in the DSM-4 and 4R, there was ADD, only the inattention type, and ADHD with the hyperactivity. In the new one, there is no ADD anymore. These children disappeared, they're only ADHD. Everyone have hyperactivity and impulsivity. Um, what is important that we see that the um, ADHD affect the child in many areas of his life, um, on academic achievement, social, friends, and behavioral levels. Uh, it affects emotion condition as well as parent-child relationship. It's diagnosis in between eight to 10% of the children and adolescent, because it's chronic. It doesn't disappear when you are adult. It just um, come to shape in a different way, okay? We are not jumping. We have a good secretary that we will not forget everything, or a good wife that have a list, what we should do, etc., etc. And the hyperactivity is become lower. Um, it's a boy's disorder. It's nine boys versus one girl. And 80% of the children with ADHD have comorbidity, which means they have another mental disorder. 50% of them have two comorbidity, which means two other mental disorder. Most of the times is behavioral problem, conduct disorder, or oppositional defined disorder, learning disability, anxiety disorder, depression, tics, etc., etc. Um, it is a question if it's primarily or secondary to ADHD. Okay, let's think about the child who now is five years old or six years old. When he's five, he's going to kindergarten, he's playing. There is, okay, the teacher may say that he's a little bit disrupted, he cannot sit in concentration, but most of the time, he play in kindergarten, okay? You are eight hours in kindergarten, and seven hours or six of them you play. Now, in the first grade, when you go to school, what happened? Seven hours you sit and learn, and one hour you play, okay? So you have to sit for 50 minutes, concentrate, okay, not too much move, and then 10 minutes you can go to a break. Now see, think about this child, he has difficulty to concentrate, okay, it's difficult for him, so he's like this. <laughs> Aye. Okay, so the child that sits next to him, say, Ay, what are you doing? Stop. Hey, this is, you know, the children that split the table. <laughs> this is mine. This is yours. Don't split. But they cannot. All of the singers all around. And they talk. And they must stand, sit. Stand, sit. They go around. They, so the teach, it's very destructive to the other class, of course. So the teacher is angry. It's difficult for them to concentrate, and now they have to learn. One plus one is two. 
ABC, and it's very difficult for them to concentrate now. ADHD have no um, um, with, um, correlation. correlation with intelligent. So some of these children are very smart. And think how difficult it is to go to the first grade and you cannot understand anything. Not because you are not smart, because it's difficult to, con to concentrate. Okay? So these children, when, especially when they enter the school, they started to develop anxiety, depression sometimes, okay? Peer problem, because if I cannot wait to my turn and I jump, impulsively, what happened? If I now want to go on the slide, but there is a line, but they cannot wait. So I push everyone. So what will happen? My friend will be, won't, won't be happy, okay? Etc. etc. So they have a lot of problems, and with parent-child relationship, of course. One of the parents, I remember a mother that told us that and I say it a lot of time, so if someone heard it already, okay, okay. So a lot of uh, um, parents, tell, this is one story that the parents tell us. Um, I have a very nice girl, okay, but she all the time talk. Talking and talking and talking and talking. It's, it, it, with girls, the ADHD is especially, the hyperactive is especially with the mouse, they talk, 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 okay. So I go to the kitchen, and she goes after me because she wants to tell me how was her day. You know, mommy, I play with Dana, and Dana, they do this, and she told me this, and she told me this. And I say, okay, okay, that's nice, but she doesn't stop, and she says, more, and more, and more, and, and man say, okay, that's enough, I, und I understand, I understand. And I want to tell you what happened then, okay? Okay, because she wants a good conversation with the daughter, she wants to be concerned about, um, 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 about her day, especially, but it doesn't stop. And the mother said, okay, so now I go to do um, the laundry. And she said, oh, you can go and see television or anything. And the sister said, okay, but after a minute she came after her. And she said, and you know, Dana told me that blah, 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 blah. And the mother said, okay, I understand, okay, okay, okay. Um, now, and she tried to get away from the child, and eventually she go to the toilet, because only then she have peace and quiet. The child cannot come with her to the toilet, okay? And she closed the door and she said, just 10 minutes of quiet, but what happened? The child stand outside, okay, like this, and said, well, mommy, and then Shira told me that she wants and, blah, blah, blah. And, the, and, the, and the mother feel like, you know, like, swear, I can't, I can't, go away, you know? And this is a nice kid. We are not talking about the, with, the, with the children with the conduct disorder yet. Okay, so think about it. This is um, affect the relationship between the parent and the child. And it's the fact um, the way the child think about him, himself and the way the parents think about his, uh, themselves. Okay. So, next, ADHD is highly hereditary, which means most of the time, the family that comes to us tell us that there is one more child with ADHD or one of the parents have ADHD as well. Okay, not all the time, but a lot of time. So think about the parents that it's ADHD who need to anchor a child with ADHD. Okay, ADHD is believed to have an organic base with its development and severity being closely influenced by environment, especially parents and family functioning, okay? So this is very important to us in NVR. You can understand why we believe in parent training, okay? So we have a lot of hope here. ADHD affects not only the children, but all of their surrounding, especially parents and siblings. We talk about it. And parents usually describe the child behavior as problematic and exhausted um, to deal with. Um, one of the parents told us it's like being on a carousel that they have no control over. Another one told us it's like being on an endless roller coaster. Okay, so. 
Barclay, he is one of the famous uh, researchers that uh, he is a special in, in uh, ADHD, and he referred to ADHD as a failure in inhibition mechanism, okay, emotional, behavior, and cognitive. So this can easily lead to impulsive behavior, misinterpretation of social behavior, learning difficulty, and academic mistake due to impatient or hurry to draw conclusion. Now, a lot of child say to us, they are all against me, okay? But sometimes he really seems like that. Um, and he told us something like, um, Danny hit me. And we said, okay, let's, let's understand what happened. Why Danny hit you? I don't know. He just hit me. He hit me every time. And when we think about it, we understand something else. Like Danny goes in the corridor, which is very crowded, and by mistake he did like this, okay? And the child got hurt. But he's immediately jumped to conclusion. Be, be, instead of thinking about the possibility why Danny um, pushed me or something like that, he did it against me. And it's happened again and again And how the child reacts with violent behavior toward Danny. Okay? So think about driving a car with no brakes or bad brakes and what will happen. This would happen a lot of time to these children. Um, so, uh, and, and they have a difficulty with uh, driving, but this is another lecture. But this, this happens a lot of time to ADHD children, and because they are not alone and there are other people, a lot of time this is what happens because they crash at the people around them. Okay, so the NICE guideline, probably uh, uh, this is the um, um, European um, healthcare guide, guideline to treat ADHD. He said children under the age of five, the first line is parent training to deal with ADHD, and children over five years and young, young people, first line is Again, parent training, and the second line is medication. I just want to say that it's, in America it's the opposite. There are a very pro-medication, so first line is medication, second line is parent training, but of course, we are like the European, of course. Um, so what is LVR parental training? Okay, this is what we do in the ADHD clinics. NVR parental training has two major goals. One of the goals, of course, is improve the child condition. But the second goal, which is equally important, is improve the parent's condition. Okay, because the parents come to us exhausted, they just say, take the child. When the child is not at home, we, it's like heaven. When he comes home, it's a disaster. So we want to improve not only the child condition, but the parent's capacity to deal with him. So these two goals are equal and interdependent. NVR teaches parents how to anchor themselves in order to anchor the child. And we work about four major things. First of all, which is the most important in our clinic, is self-control of the parents. Okay, how can I control myself? It's mean a lot of work in, about emotion regulation, inhibition, and it's very important because lots of the parents that come to us have ADHD themselves. Okay, so think about the escalation cycle when the child is yelling about the parents, who is yelling about the child, who is yelling about etc., etc., etc. So we work very hard about self-control of the parents. Another thing which is very important with ADHD is create a routine and structure at home and opposed to the chaos that there is in the f these families. Parental present and vigilant care, of course, and creating a support network to parents and children, which is very important because the um, research in this field shows us that caregiver, okay, other caregiver, not the parents maybe, but uh, the parents as well, but if you need support, so a grandmother, grandfather, babysitter, a lot of time doesn't want to babysit this child. So there is more pressure on the parents because they have no one to leave the child with. So we work a lot, a lot about creating this uh, network support for the parents. The hypothesis is a parent who can anchor himself, anchor his child. 
a parent who regulate himself, not his child, who regulate himself, regulate his child as a consequence, you can see the, okay? If you are awake, you can see the mistake. And the child ADHD disorder is more regulated and decrease in external behavior and internal problems, anxiety, depression. So this is the research. Now, again, I want to ask, um, okay, in the end. Now, the research. The study was conducted in, cl in the clinic of systemic treatment at Schneider Hospital. There was 101 children, family, children um, and parents of these children with ADHD and behavioral problems or ODD. Some of them have had other comorbidity like tic disorder, landing disorder, anxiety, depression, but all of them have ADHD with behavior uh, problem. Um, or, um, 30 percent, uh, no, 60, 60 percent of them got, uh, um, was on medication, Ritalin, Concerta, Adderall, Resperidal, which didn't work so good, that's why they come to the clinic. And uh, a lot of them were uh, in the past in other treatment that didn't work. Um, so we have really severe cases of ADHD with, behavior, with problem behavior um, at home, at school, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, family were, were randomly assigned to two groups, the study group and the control group. The study group, it was, they gave a NVR a parental training. Now, we develop a special manual for these children because the original ma manual that we had, it was between eight to 10 um, session, wasn't enough. And we said, okay, we have to uh, um, give them more tools because ADHD is chronic. So we said, how can we give them more tools that they can um, uh, um, um, deal with it? And another thing that we did, that we gave consultation to the school. One of the things that was very important us is to create an alliance between the child and the school because a lot of um, a difficulty behavior occur at school. A lot of the children came to us with a note from the teacher, okay? This child or parents must have a treatment, therapy, otherwise he cannot come to school. There was a specific case that I remember that a child um, that the parents come and the father said uh, there is no problem. Yeah, he's a little bit hyperactive, but I don't know why the, the teacher said that he cannot go to school without treatment. And, we, and it was again and again and again like that. And we talked with the, and the father said, I don't know why, I don't know why. We said, okay, we talked to the teacher and we have a meeting with the teacher and the father. And the teacher said, what do you mean you don't understand? He's violent, and he said he's not violent. And then the teacher said, but he threw a chair on me. And the parents said, but, she di but he, didn't, he didn't hit, he missed. So what is the problem, okay? <laughs> so the father was really, he, was, he really meant it. What is the problem? It's not violent because he didn't, he missed, okay? So a lot of the problem happened in school and a lot of time parents and teacher argue who is the responsibility of it. The child is responsible, the parent's responsibility, the teacher's responsibility. And because it's so difficult to the parents to handle with these children, sometimes they want someone to deal with them, okay, beside themselves. So they said, okay, when they are at school, this is not my responsibility. Please, teacher, you learn how to be a teacher. You're supposed to know how to deal with these children. And the teacher said, I have 30 children. I, can, I cannot give him special one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one lesson. He distracts the whole class and you have to deal with it. And a lot of times they just throw the hot potato, which is the child, on each other and no one deal with it. Okay, so uh, we, take a lot of, we took a lot of effort to build an alliance between parents and teachers and we go to the school to do it. Uh, so this is why you have to do a, a 12 to 14 uh, a session instead of only 8 to 10, um, and to work about the chronic condition of the ADHD. A lot of emphasis about self-control of the parents more than usual. Um, the control, the con control group was a wait list, and after they wait 
for the, the 12 to 14 weeks, they got as well the NVR training, okay? The outcome of the research was both uh, out, uh, outcome research and uh, process research, we, which means before or after we want to see if it really works, and the other thing that we want to see what happened in the middle, okay? So the measure, it's not so uh, important, but I don't know if it interests you, but we have um, uh, before, we, all the measure we took before the beginning of the treatment in the intake, after the end of the treatment, and uh, after a follow-up period, which was three till four months, the, con the control group um, have the first measure in the intake, the second after the, after the period of the waiting period, and the third after treatment, and the four after follow-up period. The measures was um, we assess the child condition by checklist a uh, symptom of CBCL, Achenbach, if you know, which is a 100 question about the child condition, and the CONOS questionnaire, which is a, a long questionnaire about hyperactive. The CONOS was uh, filled by the parents and the teachers, um, we assessed the, the, um, the parents' condition by um, questionnaires, the anchoring function questionnaire. We wanted to see if there are more anchor after treatment. The parental helplessness, because they talk about their feeling of helplessness. And emotion dysregulation, because we thought that um, if the parents will be more emotion regulation, then the child will have be more emotion regulation, which means the impulse will go down. And another thing that we check is shaking up questionnaire. I don't know how to say it in English. In Hebrew, it's the tool. In English, we call it shaking up or a shaking syndrome, because a lot of time the parents describe himself like being shaken by the child, you know, like want to pull his hair, I can't take it anymore. So there is a syndrome of babies being shaken by the parents. So this syndrome is parents being shaken by their children. Okay, this is what we wanted to, to check. And we um, measure it during the uh, treatment in four point, four times point, in the beginning, um, session number four, session number eight, and in the end of treatment. The result, of course. The result show us a significant change in all parent measurement, okay? So, and we, um, it was relative to the condition in the beginning of treatment and to the control group, and the improvement of the parent condition was uh, pre preserved throughout the four hour period. Okay, now we can see it. it this is the parental anchoring. Uh, the upper line is the mother. The down, you know, the, the upper line is the mother and the line down is the fathers. As you can see, mothers in the beginning were more anchor than the, fa than the father and in the end they stay more anchor. But during the follow up, they began and they were they're still far away, okay. So um, you can see here three point before, after, and follow up after uh, three to four months, which means that the parents, both of them, uh, after the end of treatment, were more anchor, and they continue it. it it's uh, preserved after uh, the, the follow up. This is emotion dysregulation, which means the parents and the, the, both the parents, the mother and the father, become more, more emotion regulate, okay? Um, again, the, ah, here the mother is, as you can see, are less regulated, okay? You can see that the emotion dysregulation is much higher than the father's at the beginning of treatment. And in the end of treatment, they, the, the gap between them is much smaller. Okay, and again, this continued during the follow-up and even got better, okay? The next one is parental helplessness. Here you can see that the mother is a little bit more, feel more helplessness than the father. This was surprised because we thought that the mother feel much more helplessness, but apparently not. But in the end, and you can see, 
the helplessness reduce significantly and they come together on the same level. And again, it consists during the follow-up. So what we can say from this result, that for sure the parents' condition become much better. Okay, now let's check what's the child condition. Ah, another thing, sorry. The, parent, the, the parents shaken up syndrome, we can see that it go down linearly with the proceed of the treatment, okay? We can see it go down from session one to session two, to session three, to session four, linear with the treatment. Again, in the beginning, mother was much more shaken up. In the end, it was on the same level, which is important. Okay, now what is the child condition? As you, we check three things. One is the ADHD core symptom. Okay, one is the ADHD core symptom. And I just remind you that ADHD is neurological disorder and chronic. There is no cure, okay, that the child would stop the ADHD. Second, children externalize, externalize behaviors like behavior problem, violence, emotion dysregulation, tantrum effect, uh, attack, etc., etc., and internal internalizing symptoms, which is the anxiety and depression of the child. Okay, so let's see what happened. As you can see, there is this is the control group. I don't have a pointer. Ah, I have a pointer. Oh, okay. So don't have to use it. Ah, there is. You can see there. Ah, I have to. Ah, okay. Thank you. The red button. This is the control group. You see, there is no change. This is the externalized. This is the internalizing, and this is the ADHD. There is no change between it. This. Is the uh, study group? Say what is before and after. It's only okay. Hebrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is before and this is after the control group. There is no difference about all of the measurements. This is the before and after of the, the uh, study group, the intervention group. This is the externalized before, this is the externalized after. This is the internalized before, this is the internalizing behavior after. This is the ADHD. This is the ADHD before, and this is the ADHD after, okay? So you can see, is it understood? The baseline is not, it's, it looks like it's not the same, but it's the same. We check it statistically, there is no significant change it's look here like this is much higher, but significantly, the, statistically, there is no change. Okay, it's the same, although it's looked differently. Okay, so what we see, there, there is no change here, and there is a change here. Okay, and I will see uh, one after another, okay. This is the externalized and internalized symptoms. Okay, again, this one is the externalized, the upper one, this is before treatment, this is after treatment, and this is the follow-up. As you can see, it stayed the same. But, was, but what we found that was very surprising, okay, it, this is the internalizing symptom, which means anxiety, depression of the child. This is before, this is after, and this is follow-up. So what is very interesting, if you see, that the internalized symptom of the child continue to go down, okay, after treatment. Not only they preserved, but they continue to go down. This is a dream of every therapy, that even you stop the therapy, it's not only, it's not going back, but it's continue to, uh, to, to change, which means we did something that we can uh, hypothesize what it is, but we did something that um, deal with the anxiety and the depression of the child, although we didn't aim for it. We only aim to change the ADHD and the internalized problem, okay? External 
externalized problem, yes, thank you, the externalized problem, okay? So this is something that we found and we had to explain, okay? And we talk after what, what does it mean for, I think, for, okay, talk a bit about now. What we think about that, this, the thing that was changed is the relationship between the parents and the children, okay? Because after we cleaned, we cleaned okay? The bad, the problematic behavior and the HDD symptom. So the relationship between the parents and the child because become um, with less escalation, with less violence, and the relationship, a different relationship could build up between parents and children. This is the ADHD core symptom. What we see is this is the parents report and this is the uh, teacher report. The teacher report no change <laughs> at all. Okay, we have no luck with the teachers. But the parents report a change, significantly change after treatment. Unfortunately, it goes up again in the follow-up. So it was a little bit disappointed. But if we think about it, ADHD is a neurobiological sim uh, disorder, okay? So this is the core symptom of ADHD, attention, concentration. But when we look about the hyperactivity and the impulsive, uh, impulsiveness that we check and put under the externalizing behavior, we see that it did go down, okay, and remain the change remain. So there is a difference between the attentive, attentive and concentration symptoms to other symptoms of ADHD, of the impulsive and the hyperactive. And another thing that is very important, that to have ADHD, you need to have two things. One, you, have the, you, you need to do a check, check, you need to say, okay, you, the child have all the symptoms, hyperactive, impulsiveness, concentration, inattentive, etc. And the other things that you must have to have the ADHD diagnose, uh, diagnosed is impairment in relation, social relational, at school, and in parents, two of, two of three, okay? There is three things, parent, uh, family function, school function, and social function. If you have impairment in two of three, out of them, uh, you have the ADHD. So what we change is the impairment. So does the children, does the children have ADHD now? Yes or no? It's a question. Of course, yes, but it's reduced um, um, very much. So another thing that uh, I have to, five minutes, okay. Another, ah, 10 minutes. Another thing uh, that we found is a very low dropout rate from therapy, only 5%. Now, usually in ADHD uh, uh, research, in CBT or parental training, we find 30 to 40 percent of dropout. There are some searches that even um, suggest 50 percent. So why did we have in NVR only 5 percent dropout? Okay, now this is um, something that is very unique for NVR. So there is a number of reasons, and we think one of them, if you remember, we said the goals are to improve the child condition and to improve the parent's condition. Most of the parental training method, Barclay and other parental tra parent training method, don't pay so much attention to improve the parent's condition. Okay, they only see them as someone that can help us improve the child condition. In our research, these two goals was equal. And this is one of the reasons, I think one of the main reasons that parents remain in therapy. Because when they come and tell us how they did during the week, we didn't say, oh, you're bad. Why did we do this? Why did you yell at the child? Didn't we talk about it again and again and again? Don't yell about the child. 
hit the iron when it's cold, etc., etc. How many times? No, we didn't say it. We said to him, you know what? You are right. You are not Buddha. You are not the Dalai Lama. You are not live on a mountain. There is, now we can understand why, why the Buddha has no kids. You cannot do meditation all day when you have kids. Okay? It will not work. Okay? In the reality, your children drive you crazy. I practice NVR almost 20 years. If you see the way that I talk to my daughter, <laughs> I will not stand here. <laughs> For sure. Okay? What to do? Okay? So we say to parents, you are not Buddha. So instead of yelling off your child 100 times a day, can you yell at them 95 times till next week? And in the next week, can you try to reduce the conflict to 90 times? Okay, because if we, if we say to them you have to be Buddha, they will go away. They cannot be Buddha. If the therapist try to change me so much, it will not work. But we don't try to change you into another, another human being. And this is a very important message to the parents. It's a model to the child. The child, the parents come and said, but he yelled at me. You told me to do a sitting. You know how he behaved in the sitting? And we said, okay. But did he use the same, same word? Did he say, I want to kill you. I hate you. I will murder you. Or he said, I don't like it. You're bad parents. Is it a different? It's a different. And if the parents cannot see the different and the therapy cannot see the different, they will, they, no, no change will occur. So one of the things that we teach the parents is to see these differences in their behavior and the child behavior. It's a parallel process. So we have to be very tolerant and empathic to the parents and this is how they can be empathic and tolerant to the change of the child. And as we don't expect the mother to become a Buddha, we do not expect the child to become a, a square, I don't know how to say it in English, a laugh laugh, nerd. Okay, he will not become a nerd. I'm sorry, ADHD is not become a nerd. Okay, so this is a very important expectation. And we are working with the parents about this expectation all the time again and again. And I think this is one of the reasons that parents is, is, is staying in therapy. Another thing, we do not blame the parents at all. We say to the parents, you have not created the problem, but you can be the solution. Now, this is a big change from other parental training approach, which Chaim already talked about it, and he talked about it a lot, about blaming the parents. We are not blaming the parents, okay? It's not about judgmental, but you can be the solution, and this is a very different aspect to address the, the, the parent, a solution or a problem. You are weak or you are strong, okay? And the third thing that we are going to talk about with Nama Gershi um, tomorrow in, the, in our workshop is about the fathers. We insist about fathers in therapy, okay? Now, most of the, of the therapies have this idea that you cannot force the father to come to therapy. You only work with the one that come to, to the clinic. And it's especially in Israel, I think all over, but I can only talk about Israel, especially in, a, in public clinics like hospital. Okay, the one that have the motivation to come to do the chant, we work with him and we said no. Children have two parents. Most of the children have two parents, okay? If you have only one, come only one. But every child that have two parents, both of the parents have to come to therapy. Because if you want your child to know that you are present in his life, you need to be present in therapy. 
And this is a message that most of the therapists are not used to it. The mother and the father said, we don't have time. We are busy. We need to provide food. I cannot go out every week, every week for one hour to come to therapy. Sometimes the mother doesn't want the father to come to therapy because she is afraid to lose control because she blames the father that he doesn't know what to do. Okay? He wants, he, she wants him to know what to do, but she's afraid to lose control. And we said, we insist on the fathers. Okay? So, every family that only the mother comes or the mothers come to intake and then slowly the fathers stop coming, we said, we stop the treatment. We will not treat you only with the mothers because you are important. There is no replacement to you, the father. So we empower him very much. We believe in it very much. And it works. It works. Therapist afraid to put this ultimatum. If the father will not come, we stop the treatment. But we put this ultimatum not because we want to punish you, because you are so important that it will not work if you won't come. It will not work. And, it's, and, and, it's, and we see that the father responds to it and they come. So 5% of dropout, which means 5% of family, that both parents drop out. Okay? There is no family that only the mother came to treatment at less there was a, a divorce or a single mother, okay? So don't afraid to tell the fathers you have to come. And the, the last thing, I didn't show you the mediation uh, because it was too much, but what we, we examined the mediation. Uh, what, what, what is important that the father anchoring was the mediation, uh, um, how you call it? <laughs> that influenced the most about the severity of the ADHD of the child. Okay? Only the father anchoring function was the one that mediate the change in the ADHD behavior. The mother helplessness mediate the child external behaviors, but only the father anchoring puts um, um, mediate the change in the ADHD. Eva? Yes, yes, we talk about boys more than girls, which especially the father figure is very important to them. Yeah. So the conclusion, NVR intervention improved the condition of both children with ADHD and their parents. And one of the things that we succeed more than other approach is the low drop-up rate.